What's going on, my fellow stock market trader and investor homies? It's your boy, Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down my top three stocks to buy and hold long term in 2023. These are the type of stocks that you want to buy and hold forever. You cost average in, put them in your long term portfolio, forget about them, come back in five or 10 years and see that you're sitting on a bag and that they went to the moon. Now, the stock market has been sketchy to say the least. There's a lot of smart, sharp people out there saying that we're entering a recession and the market is going to see a crash or correction. And that's great. Did you know that investors who buy long-term positions in the market during market corrections or crashes outperform the average return? That's right. It's counterintuitive. If you buy during a bull run, you're probably going to see an average return. If you'd buy during a bear market or a crash, you're going to outpace the average return that investors traditionally see. Look at 2007, 2008, the financial crisis. If you started buying at, let's say, 15% off of all-time highs, that's great. You start averaging in, but what happens? The market continues to drop. It ends up dropping to 50% off the all-time highs. And that's a hard drop, right? That That's tough to hold through that drop. We could see something like that happen now. We very well could see something like that happen now. But it doesn't matter. There are three things guaranteed to happen in life. Number one is death. Number two is taxes. And number three is the U.S. stock market will eventually make a new all-time high. So if we know that, then why don't we start cost averaging into some really good stocks as the market comes down? That's what I'm doing. And if the market doesn't make new all-time highs, we have a bigger problem than our finances and our investment portfolio because it probably means that aliens invaded or we're in war, World War III, something of that nature. So I'm going into this recession or correction thinking that the market is going to make a new all-time high in the next five to seven years, and I'm going to be loading the boat with some good long-term discount value plays. Let's get it. My favorite stock that I'm currently adding to my long-term portfolio is Amazon. The e-commerce giant Amazon is continuing to dominate, and I love it. The reason I love it is because it's not going anywhere. It's not going out of business anytime soon, and that's important for me when I'm investing in companies for the long term, especially in a financial recession like we're seeing today. There are companies that will go out of business during this recession, and investors will get hurt. However, Amazon is not one of those companies. Amazon is not going out of business, and I personally think that Amazon will make a new all-time high in the next five to seven years. And because I think that Amazon will make a new all-time high in the next five to seven years, and it's trading off of those all-time highs by over 40%, then obviously I think Amazon is currently trading at a value price point. Okay, Amazon, I break it down into four different business segments. Number one is the most well-known, and that's e-commerce. E-commerce continues to dominate Amazon as a company, and Amazon continues to dominate e-commerce. We have seen Amazon's revenue numbers climb and climb fast. 2016, $136 billion, and in Amazon's latest annual report, they were over $500 billion in annual revenue, huge numbers. However, Amazon did lose money in 2022. They had a bad 2022. They've had to lay off thousands and thousands of employees, and that's why the stock is down. But some of this loss is due to growing pains, and it was also greatly due to the pandemic. And I personally think that Amazon is going to be just fine and we're going to see better than expected earnings report over the next several years. It may take a while to get out of this hole, but Amazon is going to be just fine and it will be an extremely profitable company. And part of the reason that I think Amazon saw a loss and had to let go of a lot of its employees is because they implemented this sparrow in some of their warehouses. They let go of over 18,000 employees, which is terrible for those employees. But 
it's going to end up making Amazon a more profitable company. This Sparrow is a robotic system that can detect, select, and handle individual products in, and of, in Amazon's inventory. So it's just a big robotic arm that can move these packages around Amazon's warehouses. It looks very similar to something you would see in a Tesla Gigafactory. Now, Amazon says they had to let go of these employees due to financial issues that the company is having. And I tend to think that these employees were the most expendable, probably employees that this Sparrow can replace. Now, there are arguments that this is not a good thing, but for shareholders, we cannot be focused on you know the sad part of this. We have to be looking at the bottom line, the black and white, part of this story. AWS is the second part of Amazon's business that I'm in love with. And this is going to be the biggest net revenue producer for Amazon, in my opinion. AWS, Amazon Web Services, and their cloud data side of things, huge profit margin potential from this side of the business. And number three is content creation. Nobody is talking about Amazon as a content distribution service. Amazon Prime Video, and how about Amazon getting Thursday Night Football, NFL Football on Amazon Prime Video. It was a huge success. It was criticized early. There was some growing pains, but Amazon Thursday Night Football is huge. They can continue to add more sports, more content to Amazon Prime Video and just continue to grow. Thursday Night Football, Nielsen said that it did really well from that coveted 18 to 34 viewer. Advertisers will pay big money for that 18 to 34 age range and Thursday Night Football had a big viewership from that age range. Number four is what has everybody excited, AI. It's the sexy part of investing right now. Everybody wants to be invested in AI. You hear everybody talking about NVIDIA, Google, and ChatGPT, but nobody's talking about Amazon on the AI front. And I think they're going to be one of the big players in AI. One of the main reasons I think Amazon is a great long-term play right now is because of the age situation we have going on in our country old people your mom your grandma your dad they aren't using amazon like we use amazon they don't shop online like we shop online my mom would never buy clothes for christmas presents on amazon she's going to go to the mall which is going out of style right nobody's doing that anymore except old people but as we get older and our kids get older they're going to shop entirely online no more brick and mortar shopping so as people get older amazon is going to develop more customers just by default just as the older generation falls off and stops shopping and the new generation is the main shopper amazon's going to have more customers it's pretty common sense, but I think it's a part of the uh, Amazon story that isn't really covered. Amazon is currently trading for $98 per share. Off of the all-time highs of 188 down to 98 boom. I think this is a $200 stock in the next four years. It could happen a lot faster than that if we don't see a terrible recession, but I'm giving us room for a two-year recession, a two-year rebound back up to all-time highs. So if you can get it at under 100 it's a great deal at under 100. You can't beat it. It hasn't traded at under $100 since 2020. So it's 2023, three years later, you're getting Amazon stock under $100 per share. My top stock in my long term portfolio. It will be my biggest allocation. If it continues to drop, I'm going to continue to add. Remember, we talked about 2007, 2008. We talked about the pandemic. It could continue to drop another 15, 20%. It could drop another 30%, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have diversification, as long as you have the ability to hold through the pain and you don't overexpose yourself, it doesn't matter how far these companies drop because the US stock market is going to make a new all-time high. The second company that I'm currently adding to my long-term buy and hold forever portfolio is PayPal, ticker PYPL, the online digital payment processor for small businesses, continues to dominate the space, continues to have a huge market share, continues to grow, but for some reason the stock is down over 70% from all-time highs. It continues to really have good revenue numbers, it continues to grow, but the stock is down and I think it is currently 
undervalued. PayPal growth continues. Active accounts in 2015, 181 million. 2022, 435 million. Has first mover advantage in the online payment processing space. Total payment volume, 288 billion. 2015, over a trillion dollars of payments were done on PayPal in 2022. Free cash flow, 1.8 billion in 2015. 5.1 5.1 billion in 2022. So the numbers keep getting better, but the stock has gone down and it's trading 70% off all time highs. And once again, very similar with Amazon, I personally don't think PayPal is going anywhere. And I do think it'll make new all time highs in the next five years or so. So if I think that, then obviously, like Amazon, I think PayPal is a good deal at today's market value. One of the main aspects of PayPal that has me excited of future growth is buy now, pay later. Merchants, businesses can implement this PayPal buy now, pay later service and have no risk, but the customer can basically buy on credit buy now and then they pay over i think it's four payments they make payments and they can buy whatever the hell they want to buy but the merchant doesn't take on any risk if the pay if the customer doesn't pay make their payments the merchant doesn't take a loss so merchants are obviously going to want to utilize this buy now pay later service it's free marketing you don't really have to do any marketing to the merchants because they're not taking any risk it's all upside for the merchant and PayPal basically becomes a lender at this point and they're going to make interest. They are going to make money on this buy now, pay later service that they're offering. PayPal is a company that continues to increase profit, increase revenue, and has over $5 billion in free cash flow. It had a really good 2022, but it continued to crash from $310 per share all the way to $73 per share. This is due to market uncertainty, and there's really no other reason to explain the drop and the decrease in PayPal's market valuation other than market uncertainty and market fear. And that is the type of investment that I'm looking to get into. Now, I'm not going to load the boat with PayPal, but I will put it in my long-term portfolio as it is my number two favorite stock to invest in right now. Now, there are more risks, in my opinion, with PayPal than a company like Amazon. It is a riskier sector. There is stiffer competition with companies like Square that have similar product offerings. But I think PayPal will be just fine. And I have a price target of $350 per share within the next five years. Now, I know some of you guys aren't looking to hold a stock for five years, but this video is for long-term investments, not swing trades, not one-year holds, but long-term holds, and that is where the real money is made. A stock like PayPal, which has tons of cash on the books, continues to grow, continues to add customers and merchants, continues to see revenue grow and profit margins grow, is trading off the highs by over 70 That's the type of company that I want to hold long term. The third and final stock that I'm currently adding to my long term portfolio is kind of a cheat code, and that is Kathy Wood's RK ETF. Kathy Wood was the stock market darling from the early pandemic through mid pandemic. And over the last year, her ETFs have absolutely collapsed. Her ARK ETF, which is the ARK Innovation ETF, has fallen by more than 75% as the market has become risk off. Now, these innovation stocks are more of growth orientated. They're more looked at as high risk. So investors suck their money out of these high risk stocks and put it in safer assets such as bonds and more established, well-established companies. But however, this ETF has fallen by so much. It has given so much back that I think a lot of that risk has already been depleted and taken out of the ETF. Now look at this. This this graph down here illustrates it well. We had the market bottom during the pandemic. Then we had this huge monster run up. And then the market became risk off and RK sold off by 75%. But you can see the upside potential, right? $20,000 at the bottom of the pandemic turns into over $80,000 for Xing your money. There will be another environment of risk on investing where investors want exposure to innovation. 
And I think Kathy Woods is correct that the innovation that we're going to see over the next five to 10 to two decades, 20 years is going to be crazy. Look at the innovation that we have seen over the last 20, 30 years in the United States. The United States, the innovation, the stock market, everything is evolving so quickly in today's technology climate. And I think that continues, and I think Kathy Wood is right. And I trust her and her team. She has a lot of, a lot of smart people over at ARK Invest who are monitoring these technologies and who are managing this ARK-K fund. Now, if you want to do it yourself, I totally get it. I like doing it myself as well, but I am going to allocate some of my personal portfolio to this ARK-K fund and just let it sit there and let it work. And when the market becomes risk on and you see another huge run up in these innovation stocks, these growth companies, that's when I'm going to scale out. And when the market becomes risk off like we're in today, that's when I want to be buying and adding into these risk on strategies because there is such a huge correction that has already taken place that I think a lot of the risk has already been taken out of this strategy, out of this ETF. Now, it could drop another 20, 30, 40, 50%, but I do think, like with the previous two stocks we talk about, we see another all-time high in ARK-K, and I'm gonna be in, in, I want to be involved in that. I want to have exposure to that. Here's a video kind of breaking down the ARK-K ETF, the theory behind it, the strategy behind Today, it. Today, we believe the global economy is undergoing the largest technological transformation in history, thanks to five innovation platforms evolving at the same time. Artificial intelligence. These computational systems and software evolve when fed with data, solving insoluble problems while automating knowledge work and accelerating the permeation of technology into all industries. Energy storage. Declining battery costs could cause an explosion in mobile form factors. According to our research, electric vehicles will become price competitive with traditional cars, enabling micro-mobility and aerial systems that will transform city landscapes while increasing the demand for electrical energy and displacing fossil fuels. Robotics Advances in software and sensors should enable robots to operate alongside humans in all sorts of environments, transforming every business that depends on physical processes and workflows. DNA sequencing. According to our research, as the cost to sequence a whole human genome falls precipitously, DNA sequencing, a test once limited to the research lab, should see widespread clinical adoption and a hundredfold increase in volumes, transforming healthcare completely. Last, but certainly not least, blockchain technology. We believe all money and contracts are likely to migrate onto open source protocols that enable and verify all right, so we're getting exposure to a bunch of different emerging markets, innovative markets. The top 10 holdings include Tesla sitting at number one. We have Zoom sitting at number two, Roku, three, Coinbase, four, Exact Sciences, five, Path, UiPath, six, Square, Block Inc., seven, Shopify, eight, Teladoc, nine, and DraftKings, 10. So that is innovative. That's giving you exposure. That's giving you some di diversification. Sure, all these companies are growth companies. Some will underperform the market, but the ones that are successful will, will greatly outperform the market, as we see with growth companies. There's a lot of risk, but there's a, a lot of upside as well. And now in a climate like we're in today, you see growth companies losing tons of value. But as soon as it becomes a risk on, as soon as Jerome Powell says, all right, we're going to start cutting rates, you're going to see money flooding back in to these risk on strategies like Art K. And right now, Art K is currently trading at $37 off of highs of $160. So I'm putting a price target of all-time highs, 160. It may not happen this year, may not happen next year, may not happen in three or four years, but I do believe it will happen again. So just like Amazon, just like PayPal, just like RK, my price targets for these are all-time highs. And once again, these are ultra long term holds, but I do think they have all-time high potential and they will outlast the recession that we very well may face. Remember. When there's blood in the water, that's the time to be buying. When investors are peeing their pants and running to mommy, and, the, and then in a recession, bonds are mommy, that's when I want to be buying stocks. Warren Buffett said it, when, when investors are shitting in their britches, 
I'm going to be buying stocks. I'm buying stocks right now. Remember, I'm way too stupid to be a financial advisor. This is just what I'm personally doing. It doesn't mean you should be doing it. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until next time, peace.